Buona Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It was always very difficult to preach to some of the students, right? Because uh, they will be trying to relate what you are saying to what you have been teaching in class. Eh? Maybe I've been a scientist, so please forgive me if I've been a scientist in class. Yes. Greetings from my family. Um, I, I think I need to be a little bit sincere. Um, my family is... Uh, I'm not so sure the boys pass their greetings. As yet, I was a little bit angry when I left in the morning. But uh, Laura passed her greetings. Uh, she's around. She's working today. Laura did her BSc Mechanical Engineering, her Master's Mechanical Engineering, and uh, she's finishing her PhD in Mechanical Engineering. She, also, she got her first answer. So, <laughs> it is good to talk about these athlete races that we pass for, right? And, uh, they are together, so in case you see them, they are with the sister. The sister is Sheila. Sheila did electrical engineering, also got her first class, did her masters. She's living in uh, South Africa, but she's visiting. So, uh, and my other sister, Grace, who did economics, and also got her first class. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I don't know why all the girls decided to come to my place. Uh, during this Christmas holiday, but um, uh, yes, Sheila is flying out tonight, so I'll need to take her to the airport after this preaching. Yes, but it is well. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is the life of a student where you are working hard to transform your life. I look at my life some years ago. Oh, I see some people are laughing at me. You are you're feeling sorry at how I'm having all, I'm surrounded by all these smart guys, right? So in my house, this is a joke I've always told the students at mentor. When my boys mess up, you know it is very difficult to say now before that appears a mama, see you? Yeah. Yes, most of the time it appears a it is okay. But it is okay to work hard. There's a reward for that. There is a better future. When I was, I was brought up in Behika, and that's where I stayed. We were so poor. One student asked me, what is the motivation of you having studied so fast? I just noticed that this year is my 17th year of teaching at JKU. I've taught here for the last 16 years. I just noticed my PhD is now Overdue, I got my PhD 10 years, over, over 10 years ago. And what is the motivation of having all that? Sometimes I will look at the problems at home and I will not want to go back to them. And that could be the true story here. The education you are taking here will transform you. You will be the next CEO, you will be the next manager, you will be the next VC, you will be the next great leader. Or as you get all those treasures in heaven, sorry, on earth, remember to use them to store your treasures in heaven where moths and locusts will not be able to destroy and eat. So I want to start with a story about this family. And I think it's a family from where I come from. And uh, over the Christmas holidays, at a time, his wife, who was very smart, had learned how to prepare this special meal of this animal called Shamogira. I don't know, I don't know this, but it's, it's in the family of the, of the lizards. So, she comes with that delicacy over these festive holidays and prepares it as a meal. And the husband notices what the wife is preparing and reminds the wife, please don't cook that thing. 
that thing is poisonous. It will kill all of us. But the wife tells him no and assures him, don't worry, this thing is good. And so she calls it, and the wife, the husband, chooses to take a small piece to give it to the dog. So that if the dog survives, then he will know that it is good and he will eat. So he gives it to the dog, and the dog eats and enjoys the meal, and after some time he notices the dog is playing around in the field, standing everywhere in joy. And he goes back to the house and eats this delicacy and tells the wife it is sweet. You see, then the dog did not die. And the wife continues and they eat this meal. After they had finished the meal, and they were enjoying themselves, a little boy comes into a compound and tells them, oh dear, I am from the road and I just noticed that your dog is dead. And <laughs> 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 the husband tells my wife and says, you know, <laughs> you wives, <laughs> you finish it. You know, he notices the story of Adam and Eve soon, and soon they are going to die. So, they just remain with a few minutes before they die. Right. So, they choose, he chooses to repent. And he looks at the wife and tells the wife, My wife, it's unfortunate, but now that we're about to die, it is good that I confess my sins. Every time I've always left here going for a conference, actually not been going for a conference. I have been visiting a different family at this place and we have four children there. Yeah. So it is good for you to know that I have four other children at this place. The wife is very angry. The wife has to forgive the husband. But then she also remembers that she's also about to die. So she looks at the husband and tells the husband, my husband, I also want to confess to you that these three children we have in this house are not you. So, anyway, in the process of getting a little bit angry, they cough and they realize, oh dear, we are about to die. So they forgive one another. <laughs> so while they are still sitting on their corridor, a boy comes into a compound. So they, um, and they notice a car coming into a compound, and a doctor comes and introduces himself, you know. So and so. And uh, they are wondering. Is it that that boy went to share with his doctor about our story, or what is it? So, the doctor introduces himself, and he comes and tells them, sorry, in the morning when I was uh, passing here, I didn't have time to come but I have decided to come and see you to ask for forgiveness because I was rushing for this appointment and I knocked your dog and died <laughs> So the husband and wife notices that actually it is not the lizard that killed the dog it is this dog but now they have to live with this reality. Of well, first, knowing that there is a different family, anytime my husband will be going away, he will be going to visit that family. family. But this husband, every day he comes home, these three children are not his. Isaiah 59. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor 
his ear to dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. We are full of sin. We keep doing the wrong things astray. For your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with gills. Your lips have constantly spoken falsely, and your tongues mutter wicked things. No one calls for justice. No one pleads a case with integrity. We always have our interests at heart. They rely on empty arguments. They utter lies. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. That's who we truly are. We have forgotten that we are but a passing wind. We are in this world for a short time. We are here for a season as Christians. We should be affecting and infiltrating the world and it should not be the reverse. The world should not be affecting us. You as a student are telling what the seasons here are so short. The things that happen here should not be affecting you, you should be affecting it. And so how do we enter into this world without it affecting us? From verse 20, there is some comfort that the Redeemer will come to Zion and to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. And verse 21, it teaches us how about, you know, um, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit, who is on you, will not depart from you. It will always be there as you journey alone. We are not here to just look for good grace. We are not here just to have a better life. Not to just store our treasures on the earth. Not to have only the best grace and the best blessings. Christian walk is a journey. But a journey comes with challenges, definitely. When you're walking here to the gates, it's not so straight. We have once in a while to walk on the tarmac and a little bit on the pavements. And at times we have to cross the roads. But we need to remain focused on the journey and we need to focus on the ultimate prize at the end of the journey, which is to get to the main road. And so how do we achieve this? And, you know, how do we achieve um, 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 what we desire? I refer that to the theme of this semester, and the theme of this semester is the imitators of Christ from Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 1 to 20. And you'll hear that through many um, 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 weeks as you get into the semester. And these are just instructions for Christian living. And the first instruction here is to walk in love. Ephesians from verse 1 to 6. But before we get that, what is it to walk in love? First is to imitate Christ. And this we get from verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 and 2 says, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children. And walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Just the same way we have received is the same way we will be able to pass. Then we will need to guard against temptations because on our path there is temptation. On our way from here to the road we will get into temptation. Not last week, the other week I was walking from Newsom's complex to administration here and I knew I would arrive safely, but just in the middle there, I just uh, don't want to say where because then I was scared. You know, a big snake just jumped onto my path and almost coiled on my leg. I had to jump and, you know, turn back it had gone and proceed on with my path. So those temptations are always on the path. They will come. Some of them we will see from afar, some of them will suddenly come. We have to guard against 
those temptations. From verse 3 it says to 6, but amongst you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity. What a challenge for university students, most of you at the age of you know, 18 to about 25, 26, 27, when your hormonal balance is upset. And so you have to guard yourself against this. And then there is greed, you know, uh, because these are improper for God's holy people. You know, it's very difficult to be content with little when all your friends have too much. It is so difficult to be content without, you know, to stay here without a meal when your friends are even going to eat at the staff cafeteria at ICAT. It is very easy to admire or to be greedy in the process. Nor should there be obscenity or foolish talk or coarse joking which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. That we will thank God in each and everything we have and in each and every situation we are going through. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words because of such things. God's wrath comes to those who are disobedient. The second part is to walk in the light. You are the light of the world. And the fact that you are the light of the world, you should be placed on top of the table. That light should be able to radiate and should be able to cause difference in the entire universe. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness. Before you knew the Lord, you were in darkness. But you are not there. But now you are the light in the world. Live as children of light and find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Are you willing to expose the darkness in your class, the darkness in your network, the darkness out there in, you know, in your hostel? It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed in light comes, so in the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes light. That's why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the day as Christ will shine on you. And the third part is to walk in wisdom. And that is from verse 15 to 20. Be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Oh Lord, may you teach me to number my days aright and know how few they are, that I might gain a heart of understanding, a heart of wisdom. Do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. The Lord's will is not for you just to prosper in your academics and get a first class. The Lord's will is not only for you to be the top CEO. It is greater than that. It is hidden in you, storing your treasures in heaven. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart of the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, as we come back to the topic which is seeking um, God, I will pick my scripture from Isaiah 55, verse 6 and 7, one that you will not be able to forget, and you know, you've already interrupted it several times, and it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the righteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord. And he will have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. You know, the Bible reminds us 
the treasures are the true treasure, the greatest treasure are not found in silver or gold. You know, you probably will admire the people who stand on this side and wish that one day you'd ever get there. But you know, at my age, I want to assure you that the treasures I have been able to amass, I don't find fulfillment in them. You know, the cars we have, they are many. The houses we live in, the degrees I have on my final deathbed, if you bring my PhD in physics, those cars, the houses, they will mean nothing to me. But it is the transformation you cause, the impact that you cause, that will make a lot of sense. So those are the treasures. So silver and gold will never satisfy us because one day they will perish. But the treasure we have in God will truly meet the deepest needs of our soul because this is a time. And so what does it really mean to seek the Lord? And the Hebrew word for seek is darash. It means to read something repeatedly or to study it. It means to build a path around something. You can imagine for you here, you just finished one semester and you're getting into a new semester. And if your target is to get straight A's at the end of this semester, then you have to start early. You won't start reading from week 12 and get all those A's. You have to start from week one or two. You have to beat a path. You will spend a lot of time in the library. You will spend a lot of time reading. For those of us who are into a relationship and you want it to work, it drains a lot of energy from for it to work. I've always told Laura, I prefer going to heaven before, and she doesn't like that. Because, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time taking people out for coffee again. You know, it's just too much. <laughs> <laughs> you have to beat a path. Now imagine if that is what we have to spend on our earthly treasures. What of our heavenly treasures? To really seek God means more than just going to church once or twice. It means to consistently follow a particular path. To consistently study his word. And this Isaiah 55 helps us to achieve this. And we will go through it step by step. And we say that uh, what does it really mean to seek the Lord? And the first part is to seek the Lord in prayer. The Bible says, seek the Lord where he may be found. That is verse 6. And it adds, call upon him while he is near. We are calling that parallelism, speaking, using a different word to describe the first one. To call upon the Lord means to pray. The Hebrew word for call is kara, which means to call out with your voice. When we call out uh, with our voice to God, we call that praying. And we see this repeating itself through the entire Old Testament. In Psalms 18 verse 6, David says, In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God for help. Calling upon the Lord is crying for God to help. It is praying to Him. In Psalms 105 verse 1, Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Calling upon the name of the Lord is praise, giving thanks to him. So one of one way of seeking the Lord is through consistently praying and fasting. And what does this mean? You know, what is your attitude in prayer? You know, it should not just be self-centered. It's not just about you taking all your needs to God. 
What does it mean to pray? First, it means that we should pray for salvation. It begins there. We see that in the beginning, when Adam and Eve had sinned, the Bible tells us they began to call upon the name of the Lord. They began to pray and seek for salvation. Joy 2.32, the prophet says, whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be delivered. And that's exactly repeated in Romans 10, 13. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So first, we should approach the Lord as we seek for our salvation. And, and, and it's not just about seeking for salvation. Once you achieve it, it doesn't stop there. It means that you will continue. But the second part of seeking the Lord is it also means to seek God by continuing to call upon His name in prayer. And we find this as well in the Bible, in Psalms 18.3, David says, I call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. Every time I face through enemies, I will still call on the Lord because I cannot manage it on my own. In my trouble, I cried to the Lord and He answered me. When you are faced with a mountain, it could be fears, it could be health, it could be, you know, relationship, family issues, academics. In your trouble, call upon the Lord and He will answer you. Call to me and I will answer you, Jeremiah 33, 3, and show you great and mighty things which you did not know. All these verses and more show us that after we have called on the name of the Lord to be saved, we have to continue to call on His name for all the answers and the help we need through our entire life. That means that we should continue praying to the Lord each and every moment of our life. It is not just when you wake up. You know, it's true, it is okay to wake up and pray, like Psalms 5 pray. It says, in the morning, O oh Lord, you will hear my voice, because every morning you are seeking him in prayer. But it doesn't just stop there. You know, David says in Psalms 119, 164, seven times a day, I praise you. So he is talking to God through the day. And the question is, how much of your time are you seeking the Lord in prayer? How many times are you able to dedicate to fast? How many times are you able to dedicate to read the Lord's word? Is it just a few minutes? Can you compare it? Is it just an hour? Can you compare it to the amount of time you watch that movie you love? Are you able to compare it to the amount of time you go for coffee? Are you able to compare to the amount of time you spend every Monday evening playing basketball or watching just the World Cup? The second part is seeking God in repentance. Verse 7 says, let the wicked forsake his ways. That teaches us that turning from sin is also a vital part of seeking the Lord. You will not just pray, but you will turn away from those things that have caused a cloud between your journey, between you and the Lord. You know, as we say, there is a whole sin that is causing a hindrance between you and the Lord. Are you able to ask for repentance? Are you able to turn away from your wicked ways as well? This forsaking of sin is not just a surface thing. It goes very deep into even our thoughts. We will not just forsake our wicked ways, but we will also forsake our wicked thoughts. Calling, and just like calling on the Lord, you know, uh, in our salvation. Seeking the Lord means, you know, seeking the Lord in repentance is a continuous journey. That we shall not only repent at once, but it is a continuous process. Repentance is not just a one-time thing. It is to continue through our Christian life. Our whole Christian life is to be a continuation of the experience of repentance. 
Second Chronicles 7, 14, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, what an encouragement from the Lord that we need to continue to turn from our sinful ways. And just like in our initial salvation, our sins even as Christians separate us from God, they put a cloud between us and the fellowship we will have with the Lord. Psalm 66 verse 18, if I regard wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. So if any time we sense that we are not close to God, we should be, as we should be, we should go back and we will seek Him in a special way. And this, how do we achieve this is by forsaking our evil ways and coming back to repent. The last part of our verse here is seeking God's face. And verse 7 says, I'll go back to it, and it says, that, um, uh, Let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. It says, uh, let us return to the Lord and to our God. Here again, it is talking about twice, us returning to God and, sorry, to the Lord and to our God. And we have heard this through the entire Bible. You know, God calling us back to revival, <laughs> to return to him personally. In Nehemiah 1, 9, return to me. Isaiah 44, 22, return to me. You know, uh, Jeremiah 4, 1, return to me. Joy 2, 12, return to me with all your heart. God is commanding his people who are seeking him to return to him personally. Not just to the church, not just to the religion, not just to good habits, but to return to him personally. And this reminds me of the relationship I have with my sons. Many times I travel, and when I am away, at times I have to use my iPad here to Skype with them and have a conversation in the evening. And how beautiful it is to see my voice over these gadgets. But the entire issue here is not these gadgets. The entire issue here is having a personal relationship with my voice. It is not going to God to ask for him to give you the desires of your heart. I paid for you know, the school fees, the other week, not last week, the other week. I provided for their needs. I bought for them, you know, what they need. But it's not about buying clothes. It's not about taking them to hospital. It is not just desiring God to fulfill our earthly treasures. It is about having a relationship with Him. And so, as we need to understand that, you know, prayer in the Bible are, are, are instruments that make us come closer to the Lord. But it's not just about carrying the Bible or going just to pray and fast. It is about that intentional relationship with the Lord. Our focus should not be just on prayer. Our focus should be on God himself. It is about meeting him. Seeking God is about meeting God himself. It's not about just following the religions, all the answers to the prayers we have. It's not just coming through to ask him for, you know, breakthrough in the medical condition. It is not about seeking for money and provision. It's not about seeking feelings, but it is about seeking God himself. I hope and pray that as we journey through this semester, as we journey through our prayer and fasting, it will not be just about us. 
and the deliverance is really about growing our relationship with our Master. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, who is like you? There is no one like you, O oh Lord. Lord, you reign on the earth amidst this storm. Our Heavenly Father, you are with us when it is too hot, when we cannot bear the heat anymore. Lord, when we are overwhelmed by these issues, when we are overwhelmed by sickness, when we are overwhelmed by the financial issues, when we are overwhelmed by guilt. Lord, we are seeking your face. We are asking, O oh Lord, that you will journey with us. But we are repenting of sins. And we say that, Father, you shall teach us to know our days are right and know how few they are, that we will get a heart of understanding, a heart of wisdom, to know how few our days are here on planet Earth. That we will not focus, O oh Lord, on this cloud that is too heavy for us to bear. But we will focus on seeking your face. That we will focus on building a relationship with you. That Father, this morning I seek that, oh Lord, you will journey with it at every sister, with it at every brother here who is overwhelmed with these issues here. May you show your face. May you shine your face, O oh Lord, in their life in a bigger and a brighter way. Lord, may you cause that storm to stop in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May you shower them, O oh Lord, with your love and with your fragrance. And may you cause it to radiate and cause impact in the neighborhood. Because you're so bright. Lord, may you stop that storm. But as they walk through their journey in the seas. And as the floods rage, they will be able to teach them to be still. Because you are God. You are Yahweh. You are Elohim. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah El Shaddai. You are Jehovah Nisi. And this Bless them, O oh Lord, with their everlasting blessings. Go before them. We bless you, Lord. In a baby, Jesus, Oh, 
tawala tawala na kazi zangu wana tawala ewe tawala